So, we're still at Stratton Motor Company, but I'm doing a little bonus video today. And the video is five things that I really love about the Evora 400 that you don't especially see in reviews and that you maybe only appreciate once you've had the car for a little while. But I think just make it stand out a little bit much and just remind you that you have something really nice and special. Okay, so first thing. With the wheel arches, Lotus have left them partially uncovered. And the reason for that is that basically when you look straight through the wheel and past the enormous AP Racing discs, you can see parts of the chassis, the front or rear subframe and the suspension, all the engineering stuff going on there. Now, this is something that will be familiar to Elise and XE owners already, but to me it was something that I didn't realize that they had and is really quite nice. When you're a bit of an engineering geek like me, you just love seeing these kind of mechanical things on display. And it's, I really like that Lotus have kind of left that there. The next thing is actually a couple of items that I want to show you in the boot of the car. First thing is this lovely bit of leather in here. Now I don't know why that's there and frankly I don't know why Lotus bother putting anything here at all because technically it's an unnecessary piece of leather and just adds weight. But I appreciate the fact that they put it there because it's one of these little unexpected things that you find and that gives you the sense that you've got something that's really kind of different and a little bit more upmarket which I suppose is what Lotus are trying to do with the car. The other thing to note in the engine bay is these two little hinges here and here, and they are aluminium extrusions. Very important because all of Lotus's modern architecture is founded upon the principle of the aluminium extrusion. It's what was the basis of the tub from the Elise, and it still forms the basis of every single Lotus chassis today. So it's nice that they put that little touch in there that shows you uh, just a little sneaky preview of where they've come from. It's a very, very engineering geeky thing again. The Elise S1 had aluminium extrusion pedals, but this doesn't, this has steel items that are actually lighter. So just another little touch in there. Number three on my list is the air intakes on the side. Now, strictly speaking, this one is an engineer intake. Now, if you look very closely, you'll notice that this one is actually considerably larger than the one on the other side of the car. See? This one is just a cooling intake for the engine bay and therefore doesn't need to be as big as the other one. Thing number four, which is an unexpected surprise with the car, is the gearbox and more importantly the gear shift. Now Lotus have a history of having great cars with sometimes good engines but more often than not substandard gearboxes. However with the Evora they have really really cracked it. Now apparently it is the exact same gearbox as was in the previous Evora and actually that car had a perfectly nice gear shift if it was set up right but the gear shift in this car is absolutely delightful to use. Now as you will have seen I spent the day recently with a Ferrari 355. That car had the world famous Ferrari manual gated shifter and honestly this car was nicer to row your gears with. I've been in plenty of performance cars which have had weird quirks and oddities and you know they won't give you second gear when they're cold or even numbered gears or you know they'll occasionally crunch or you know you've got to go into fifth before you go into reverse or strange stuff like this but on the whole and bearing in mind this is a box fresh gearbox this car has been absolutely fantastic it's a short throw it's positive it's got a nice rifle bolt kind of action and I just love using it. So having read so many things written about Lotus's gearboxes in a negative light, it's such a relief. And to be honest, an unexpected joy of ownership that this car has such a nice one. Now the final thing that I want to talk about is the view out of the car. I'm going to go somewhere else to show you what that's all about. The last thing that's really noteworthy is the view from the driver's seat. Now, the thing to me that separates a sporty car from a supercar is the view that you get and the fact that you are reminded on a constant basis of what you're in. Now on that scale the Evora 400 scores very very highly. So you've got this great very focused uh, instrument cluster here behind the lovely wheel with the little leather 12 o'clock marking. Now beyond that you have rising out of the side these beautiful sort of haunches or wings or whatever you want to call them they kind of really angle into the road if you've driven a ferrari 360 before it's a kind of familiar thing and actually uh whisper it quietly it does remind me of some of the classic 911s it's a very very nice view altogether you also have out the wing mirrors a view of those lovely asymmetrical air vents that i was talking about so it's just a little thing you can see the back of the car you can see the really wide rear end um you can get a similar view over here it is slightly obscured by the A-pillar, but again, you can see the air intake for the car 
it's a nice view to have in a rear view mirror. Finally, you can see here in the top of the engine, the supercharger, the sort of top of the engine. Now here you have, I think it's the supercharger actuator, I don't know precisely what it's called, but that's what I think it is. Now when you're driving along, you put your foot down, this moves, this kind of twists along. And it's nice just having something kind of mechanical, something real going on in the background. It's not something faked, it's not something sort of put on, it's not been deliberately sort of put on display there, I mean maybe it has, I don't know, but it has a real genuine mechanical function. And that's just so nice to have in any car really, but it's a little detail that really reminds you of why this car is quite special. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining me again. I hope you like what we've been doing. And as usual, an extra thanks to all of the guys that have subscribed, liked, and continue to watch the videos. If you want to know anything, or if you want to see something in particular in a future video, please comment below, let me know what you want to see. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. But in these two episodes, I want to talk about application tips, tricks, and rigging solutions to really help you get the most out of your microphones. Today, I'll be using the Smart Lab. For Isn't it? So, do you ever just stroke the ceiling? Yeah, I do actually. Yeah, it's great, <laughs> isn't it? One little thing to note on these cars, the Lotus badging at the back is badges. On these cars, it is stickers. Bit of weight saving there, just like Porsche. Don't say that. <laughs>